Greetings and welcome to Doc Comics. Today we take a closer look at Deceased Issue 2 from DC Comics. Somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, Aquaman discovers a vessel in distress. He boards in search of passengers, but all is silent until he hears screeching coming from behind a closed hatch. He opens the door and finds that every passenger on board has been infected. They were being contained in the hold, but with the door open, they rush Arthur. The sheer number overwhelms him, and they all tumble back into the ocean. In Metropolis, Damien and Jonathan are watching the chaos, contemplating Armageddon. Inside, Lois tells Clark that her parents are fine and headed to the bunker. Thinking of his own parents, Clark expresses his desire to go to Smallville, but insists on not leaving them alone. Lois suggests they head to the Daily Planet to find a way to communicate with the outside world and find more survivors. In the Gotham Underground, we find Harley and Ivy, still unaware of the outbreak. They are discussing something Harley is reluctant to do, and as she walks away, Ivy uses vines to stop her. Ivy encourages her, insisting that Harley is more than capable, and explains that she will be waiting for Harley at the Botanical Gardens. With Ivy's encouragement, Harley enters the door. Inside, Harley finds the Joker sitting in front of a rack of monitors. She tells him that their life together is over, finally breaking away from his abuse, unaware that her psychopathic boyfriend was now a slave to anti-life. Somewhere outside Metropolis, we find Hal, Dinah, and Oliver on a camping trip, completely unaware of what was happening. After some friendly banter and light-hearted joking, Hal calls it a night. In his tent, he turns on his phone for the first time that day, and soon the others hear screams coming from inside his tent. As they call out his name, a huge blast of green energy scorches the earth. When the smoke clears, they find Hal Jordan, now corrupted by the anti-life virus. The green power ring instructs Hal to stand down, but Hal is no longer in control, and his strength of will overpowers the ring's restrictions. He sends out another lethal blast, but Dinah and Oliver avoid it just in time. However, Dinah is hit with debris. Not understanding what's going on but not wanting to hurt his best friend, Ollie attempts to incapacitate Hal with a non-lethal arrow, warning that the next one will be deadly. He lines up his shot as Hal launches jagged spikes, but before the constructs reach Ollie, Black Canary uses her ultrasonic vibrations to fry Hal's brain. As they stand over Hal's body, the ring calls out that Green Lantern of Sector 2814 is deceased, but that a replacement has been found. Back in Metropolis, Clark and Jonathan have flown Lois and Damien to the roof of the Daily Planet. There, they can access the old analog system to search for survivors and assemble a resistance team. But Clark uses his X-ray vision and sees the building is swarming with the infected monsters. A brief somber moment hits them both as the realization that those monsters were once people they called friends. Moments before Clark enters to clear the building, he hears the deafening screams of Black Canary in the distance. He instructs John to keep the others safe until he returns, then flies off to the commotion. There he finds Dinah and Oliver standing over Hal's body. Dinah expresses how she does not want this power, but Superman tells her to take it as they will need all the power they can get. Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps, Dinah Lance. Flying back, they meet up with other survivors that have made contact with Batman. Oliver tells him that Hal turned into a zombie, but Batman informs him that they are not zombies. As they are not consumed by hunger and are not feeding, they simply want to spread the virus. He's already figured out that they're anti-living bent on stealing life and that the anti-life equation was a trigger that started everything. He tells them that he's infected and wearing one of Mr. Freeze's old suits, using the cold to slow down the spread of the infection, but he's well aware that it's moments from taking over completely. Standing behind him is Alfred holding a shotgun with a somber look on his face, realizing that he was about to be forced to betray the promise that he made to Martha and Thomas Wayne many years ago. Oliver pleads with him, but Bruce tells him there is literally no time for sentiment. He continues by explaining that the anti-life is a technological hybrid that can be transferred through blood and digital imagery. This means that in order for them to save the world, they need to destroy any human carriers, all satellites, and basically destroy the internet. Damien finally speaks up, trying his best to keep his composure. Damien is a stone-cold killer, 
but he is also a kid saying goodbye to his father. Wanting him to be strong, Bruce explains that Alfred has something for Damien. Moments later, Bruce reaches for his helmet in distress. Alfred calls out his name, horrified to see the corrupted face of Batman smiling back at him. Damien calls out to his father for the last time as Alfred ends the transmission and cocks his shotgun. As Batman charges him, Alfred takes aim and says it shouldn't have ended this way. I'm sorry, son, are his final words to Bruce before unloading the shotgun into his face, killing the infected Batman. Thank you for watching. Leave us a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to Doc Comics for more.